And I feel we have to go and we have to break open. We have to break open, go through into another chamber. And there, in that other chamber, we're going to see remnants of the past in a link with what of this slaughter and maybe pinpoint an energy of a man who wears this darkened cloak. He's the murderer. And his Do you feel that the spirit of that evil person, is it still it's here. haunting this place? Absolutely. It is here. If he was to be seen spiritually, his spirit outline, he would be seen with this, like, cloak covering and bent Lincoln. over and they're doing this. Yeah. But who is he? What's, he? what's his connection to the building? I know you say he's, he's murdered, but what is his connection? Why is, what has he done? Did he, did he own it? Did he live here? Did he visit? What did he do? Oh, look what they're showing me. Oh, I see, I see men at work carrying, it seems to be, sacks, boxes, and they seem to be getting told to hurry, hurry, hurry. And then I see the cloaked figure who is promising these men, in order to do the work, monies to shift this cargo, ships, yeah. the link with ships. He's the governor, he's the, he's the, he's the captain. Mm. Mary. Mary, something Mary. Mary! I, I, I swear, I actually felt the, the, the name Mary. You have to believe me. Yes. Are you picking the up name, somewhere Well, else? the name Mary came to my mind minutes ago. Um, Mary McFadden. Mac, that's it. Thank you, Sam. Yep. Mary McFadden. See, I, 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 I said Mac before. I, OK. Richard, it's in bet here. Can you check in the records and see if we have a Mary McFadden who is connected to the property, please? Just one minute, yeah, I'll have a look. Just give me a couple of minutes. As we leave Richard to verify the information, we move away from room four and towards a part of the building that's rife with poltergeist activity. What else can we expect to unearth as we investigate the Black Swan Hotel? There's something there. What was that? that? Somebody with us. After visiting room four at the Black Swan Hotel, Derek Akora and our celebrity guest, Uri Geller, have both supplied several pieces of sensory information. In addition to a possible female presence called Mary McFadden, they both felt that the building had nautical and military connections. And as we moved down to the first floor conference room, our historian, Richard Felix, gave us the results of his research. Hi, Richard. Hello, Yvette, can you hear me? Over. Hi, yeah, we just moved into the second room. Well, I have got some information for you. Um, Mary McFadden, we, we can't find any trace of, of her at the moment. Um, although they did, they did earlier mention a Scottish person, which is, is possible. Uh, but strangely enough, they also mentioned a boxer. And the landlord here in the 1960s, Dick McBride, was indeed a boxer. And they also mentioned soldiers, um, Second World War and devises during the Second World War was um, a camp for, for German and also Italian prisoners of war. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. But what makes it more amazing is that we do have information about the lady that Derek referred to as Mary. As a psychic artist, Brian Shepard claims the ability to detect and draw paranormal elements. Earlier that afternoon, we had shown him two specific areas of the Black Swan, starting with room four. His findings were to shock the landlord and landlady. OK, I've been upstairs to bedroom four, which, um, oh and you can see what I've drawn, uh, came across as a, a, a room that is being dominated by a female presence. Now, for some reason, 
I'm getting this image that is, you know, okay, a girl mm -hmm. who's pregnant. Yes. Um, and the other elements are a child, or in this case, lack of one. So whether she's losing a child, but all I'm getting is just the hand reaching or See being it. separated from her. Yeah. And significantly a key. I wouldn't know about the pregnancy bit, right? Something, but the the face is sort of a we sort of people or the sadness no, you of do, it. You do know about the pregnancy. Pre the the little girl that first came here, where she died in childbirth. So this is either, and I've drawn. I mean, that I know the furniture is different, but this is like either a bed or a chair, and that didn't. Wasn't, I wasn't sure, but that was by the window anyway. And then I was drawn. I had drawn the key because that seemed very significant. Do you think um, she was locked in? Yeah, but I think she's locking herself in and locking other people out. Did you get a name with her? All right, well, what, what's coming across to me is, is either someone, an M, in like, and I can't be specific at this, but Mar Margaret or uh, Mary or something like that. Mm -hmm. Margaret, I uh, don't know if that's mm -hmm. in any way, but that's what's coming across mm -hmm. with, with me. The fact that Brian has named the pregnant lady as Mary and sat her by Room 4's window is extraordinary. Was she the victim of murder or did she die in childbirth? As we continue our investigation in the hotel's first floor conference room, I'm keen to see if Derek and Uri can reveal more about the source of the unexplained footsteps and door handle rattles. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Here. There's an entry and an exit. Um, he um, walks round at speed at times, so there could be noises. Audible, audible is definitely, um, and I feel also probably voice as well. Um, maybe shadowy figure or figures, but more than anything else, displacements of cutlery, crockery and things I feel is most evident in this area. It's a person who's just mischievous, a person who would pull your leg in reality in physical life. Can you give me a name for this person? Well, as I've just asked for that name, Sam has been, he just gives me Joe, Joseph, Joseph. Although Derek was unable to provide us with a surname for Joseph, it seems that the conference room is prompting both psychics to detect energies that relate to the building's history. This is the heart of this building, almost like maybe there was a fire here once, mm -hmm. or someone tried to escape from there. Yes. Um, someone fell out, someone got hurt. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's almost like this section was added on to yes. it because something burnt off. Okay. So it's this section here that we're talking about. Yes, this section here. Richard, yeah. can you what? just confirm or not <laughs> confirm whether there was a Maybe fire here? There. Oh, there was a fire here then? No, no, I'm asking. There was a fire here, Yvette. Um, and as an another occasion, the building was also struck by lightning. Over. Okay. Could it be that that girl, Mary, was burnt alive here? Because that person that you've seen in room number four mm -hmm. was maybe the instigator, the person who started the fire. Yuri, it could well be. It could well be. Yeah. You know, it's almost it like around. it wasn't an accident. There was a yeah. sabotage here. Someone mm. did it purposely. Someone burnt yeah. this, tried to burn this place. Because in this corner there is evidence in the residual energy jumping out at me of malice. Mm. Malice of intent and, and feelings, you know, of that. It's like as if, yeah, I, I'm, I'm conjuring up something. But this and is, I want to do is this, this. This is Joseph. You, I feel it, that name, Joel Joseph, is causing all the, the things yeah. to happen in here. Yeah. Is that yeah. path that you took? Is that significant? Yes. That path coming up this way. Here yes. And through there. Yeah. And I feel uh, noises. I'd also, I wouldn't be at all surprised whether this spirit soul would um, were. Uh, sounds and what have you, not only do those things, but would hear uh, crazy little shrieks and things like that. Well, we've had Colin here, the landlord.